hi viewers welcome to this video so this video starts with logistic regression so what is logistic regression what and all the uh, need of learning logistic regression all these things i plan to explain in this video so previous lectures we discussed about uh, linear regression and multiple linear regression all these things those who have uh, doubts in that those who want to learn uh, about linear regression and uh, multiple linear regression please watch the previous video and uh, come back to the logistic regression video so let's start this particular uh, session so what is logistic regression why we have to lear learn logistic regression so when you are dealing with categorical data for example when i am uh, plan to identify whether the event will occur on particular day i am having a scenario i am having 100 days i plan to play tennis so among 100 days which and all days i can able to play tennis so that is the prediction what and all the inputs i can give for that whether the soil is proper and the outlook is proper or humidity is proper all these things is proper check wind is proper all these things i have to check okay so first scenario is yes so i am getting yes we can play tennis what and all the attributes the first attributes soil is dry second attributes the outlook is sunny the third attribute humidity is normal fourth attribute wind is normal okay wind is low or wind is normal so that and all the scenario i am getting for getting yes yes class when i will get no class when the soil is wet and the outlook is rainy and then wind is high and then uh, the next one humidity is not normal so these and all the parameters if occurs then i will uh, get the classes no i will not able to play tennis so such cases i will get for nearly 100 classes 100 days so all 100 days i am getting the prediction results so this type of things whether the event will occur or not whether i can play tennis or not whether the tossing coin will leads to head or tail whether the cyst predicted in the medical field whether it is dangerous or normal all these predictions will be happened with use of logistic regression so these are the real time examples we are moving for logistic regression in this we will discuss on some examples and some formulas and we will go for the coding part okay so let's go for the next one so here you, you can able to see that we are having some uh, probability decisions so here we are tossing a coin tossing a coin will leads to head or tail will uh, based on the mass of the coin and whether the person uh, toss the coin in which angle which angle whether it is uh, slightly he uh, put down and he tossed or which angle he uh, tossed the coin all this matters for identifying the results okay so what is the simplest model we can use for identifying the results and uh, if you are predicting what will happen when it goes wrong so logistic regression will deals with this particular task and it will give a proper accuracy so whether the coin will leads to head or tail also predicted by logistic regression so next to that we are estimating different problems with use of logistic regression as we as we discussed in the uh, this slide we are having here we are having uh, the particular work that will be happen with use of logistic regression the real time uh, the real estate uh, business people will use logistic regression for getting the profit so they are selling a house so the probability of house will be sold out and that will be multiplied with the prices so that they can able to identify the outcome the profit how much they are getting okay so logistic regression model is used to give the output in sense of profit and with use of that they can ab able to increase their business models so next to that we are having the uh, formula for logistic regression here we are having the curve that will be a sigmoid curve Uh, that represents the logistic regression and here we are having the formula x plus uh, w into b so x plus w into b mean by x is the inputs or how many inputs we are getting and then 
uh, W mean by the weight, according to the weight, the sum of two, the uh, product of two will be added with the bias. So that will be the log odds. So here the formula will be taken as y dash equal to 1 by 1 plus e power minus w power t into x plus b. Okay. So here x is said to be the input and then the w is said to be the weight that both are multiplied and that will be added with the bias as I told. And then we are identifying the e power for this exponential for this particular calculation that will be added with 1. So 1 by 1 plus e power minus w power t into x plus b. This is the formula to calculate the uh, event whether it is occurring or not. Okay. So this is the way they are predicting in logistic regression. So the next one we are checking here is log loss. Log loss is the difference between what is the actual value and what is the predicted value. So here you can able to see the diagram that is said to be one is said to be the predicted value and one is said to be the uh, actual value. So here we are having uh, uh, the difference between both as set. So log loss. So log loss formula will be written like this: summation of x comma y belongs to D. D mean by the data set minus y log uh, y dash minus one minus y log y minus y dash. So this is the log loss definition. So with use of this, we can able to identify whether the uh, difference between the actual value and the predicted value. Okay. So now let's see the coding part here for logistic regression. So as of now, we discussed the different scenarios where and all we can able to use the logistic regression and the formula as well as the curve. Now we are going to discuss about the program. So program contains whatever the machine learning code we are executing. We are having three main packages. One is said to be NumPy, another one is said to be Matplotlib and third one is said to be Pandas. NumPy is said to be numerical Python that is used to uh, deal with uh, the numerical calculations, the mathematical calculations in Python programming. And Pandas is used to uh, read the CSV file and that will be converted in the form of data frames. And the third one Matplotlib what we are having that will be used to just display the graph uh, as output, it, it may be a bar chart, a pie chart, or a scatter graph, whatever the graph representation the client needs, the matplotlib used to make it. Okay, so these three packages we have to import at the starting level of the program. So we are just executing that three and we executed now. And next to that, what we are doing, we are just importing the data set. So the data set is our, our data set is said to be social network ads data set. In this data set, we are having three columns. The first column is said to be age, second column is said to be estimated salary. A third column is said to be whether the person will purchase the product or not. So whether he purchase the product, we will represent it as 1. And if he is not purchasing means we will give us 0. So 0 and 1 will be uh, denoted for the particular class. So 0 class, 1 class we are having. Okay. So let's execute this code and see the data frame. So our particular CSV will, will be read by read underscore CSV and we are just getting the data set in the form of data frames. Our data set we are getting here now. This is said to be data frame uh, data type. So here as I told we are having three columns. First column is said to be age, second column is said to be estimated salary and third column is said to be purchased or not. So purchased column what you are seeing here this will be represented in form of two classes that is, that is said to be zero class and one class. Zero class represented as not purchased, one class represented as purchased. Okay. So these two columns what you are seeing this will be taken as x and the last column what you are seeing that will be taken as y. That will be the split up we are doing further. So here we are giving i lock. So this location, location, i location what you are getting colon comma colon minus one mean by first two columns will be taken that will be stored in x. Minus one mean by the last column what you are seeing that will be taken in y. So that we are getting the first two columns that is to be age and estimated salary in x. And the last column what you are seeing that is said to be the person whether he is purchased or not that will become in Y. Okay. This is the primary split up we are doing. Next further split up we are just making with use of model selection from the SKLearn. So we are using test, uh, train test split uh, class. So with use of that we are importing the method and we are passing this parameter X, Y, X test size is 0.25. So our entire uh, rows of the data set is said to be 400 rows. Among 400, 25 percentage will be taken as test size so that we are getting 100 rows. 
in the testing set remaining 300 will come in the training set so after doing this split up we will get this four variables in our variable explorer that has to be x train x test y train y test let's execute this code and see the output so here the code will be updated the variable explorer will be updated the execution of this so our executor got executor now now please listen x train and y train is the input for training our model, whatever the uh, machine learning model we are using no to train our model we are using x train and y train and x test is used to give us a testing set and with use of x test we are getting a prediction output that prediction will be compared with y test prediction results and y test results if both are common we are getting 100 percentage accuracy in that we are getting 80 rows are predicted correctly and around 20 rows are not predicted correctly mean by 80 percentage accuracy we are getting okay like that the accuracy will be modified according to the prediction level so we will we are executed this next to that we have to go for the uh, standard scalar standard scalar is just used to scale the values as we already discussed x train we are having the values like this you can able to see 1 lakh 20 thousand here 50 thousand 1 lakh 35 thousand in the salary column and here we are getting 32 44 all these things there is a huge deviation among one by one value one cell value and another cell value there is a huge deviation that deviation has to be scaled properly with use of standard scalar so this standard scalar algorithm will convert the values in the form of decimal so we are getting this particular algorithm from pre-processing sklearn.preprocessing package and with use of this we are doing the transformation so let's execute this code to do that activity so now the future scaling happened let's open x test and see the values you can able to see the values in the form of decimal now so after execution we are getting the particular uh, numerical values are converted in the form of decimal values with use of future scaling so now after this execution we will move for our logistic regression algorithm logistic regression algorithm will be acquired from sklearn dot linear underscore model so from there what and all we are doing we are just classifying the training set and testing set and we are doing the prediction with use of the classifier and that will be stored in ypred so let's execute this logistic regression classification algorithm so our classification algorithm got executed and we are getting ypred here so you can see the y prediction this is the prediction result uh, as a result from our classifier what is the actual value what we are get, having that is this said to be y test so y test what you are seeing this and this is said to be the actual value y pred is the predicted value these two values will be compared and we are getting the accuracy if in this two among these two if all the rows are correctly predicted then we are getting 100 percentage accuracy as i told earlier so how we are matching this two uh, different uh, y pred and y test with use of confusion matrix so confusion matrix will be acquired from sklearn dot matrix uh, package and with use of that confusion underscore matrix uh, generic class generic method we are passing two parameters that are to be y test and y pred and we are calculating the confusion matrix in the confusion matrix the diagonal values are said to be correctly predicted values so here we are opening the confusion matrix you can able to see the matrix we are having 100 rows in our test set among 100 rows you can able to see 65 and 24 so totally 89 rows are correctly values are and remaining values are not correctly predicted so our accuracy is said to be 89 and remaining 11 are said to be wrongly predicted so 11 percentage is said to be wrongly predicted okay so these two codes are used for displaying the uh, graph with you so so due to my configuration laptop configuration if i execute this it will not uh, having sufficient to space to uh, show the output so that i will give you this code so that you can execute in your end so please execute this code from your end and try to get the output okay so happy learning subscribe share and learn the things properly so in this video we learned how to predict the uh, person whether he purchased the product or not with use of age and salary so like that we will deal with further algorithms in machine learning we will explore all the algorithms happy learning support subscribe and share with your friends 
Thank you. Thank you very much.